Hi, everybody. Today starts a brand new section, 4.4. Our first day of 4.4, which is our intro to graphing systems of inequalities. So back in unit three, we just graph, graphed systems of equations. Now we're going to start graphing systems of inequalities. Let's jump right into this warm up. It says Adele states that since the equations in each system are the same, the graphs and solutions should all be identical. Is Adele's statement true? Explain your reasoning. Let's take a look. So right now, let's just be observers and look at what we see in graphs A, B, C, and D in each system, right? 3 fifths x plus 3. Negative 3 fifths x plus 3. Same, same, matches, right? The positive and the negative, positive, negative. Here, positive, negative, positive, negative. So the equations are the same, but what's different? What's different? Well, when I look at the systems, notice we don't have equations. We have systems of inequalities. None of these sets of signs, inequality signs, are the same. So let's see if we can help Adele to know if it's true or not, if these are all the same. You are going to need two colors. So please pause the video here. Go get yourself two different color highlighters, two different color pencils, some kind of two different colors. We will be using them on today's notes. So for me, I'm going to create um, just like a little key here, okay? So first line, I'm going to make them yellow. And second line, blue. Okay, so every line, every system, we're going to have two lines, and we're going to make sure we color code. So to figure out which line matches, right, this says y is less than 3 fifths x plus 3. Way back, we know that if it's a positive slope, it's an increasing line. So which of these lines is increasing? Increasing means left to right, it's going up. So highlight the first line. This is my first line, my first inequality. This one is this one. I know that because this has a negative slope and this is a decreasing line. Now, way back in 4.2, I had mentioned that you can figure out which side of the line to shade by looking at the inequality sign. Because this is solved for y, they're actually both solved for y, right? Look at the inequality sign. To know how to shade. Again, this only applies when these are solved for y. And if you look at all of the systems here, they are all solved for y. So this says, if it says less than, if it says y is less than, shade underneath. or down. If it says, let me see if I can move this up. If it says y is greater, that means shade above or up. Remember, when we're talking y values, we do not have left and right. This is my y-axis. I'm going to highlight this for just a second. Don't highlight what I'm going to highlight, but I want it to stand out for a second, okay? This is my y-axis. We do not have left and right. We have up and we have down. So let's see what I mean by these notes we just wrote and figure out how we're going to shade for this system. So when we look at our first equation, it says y is less than 3 fifths x plus 3. It's already graphed for me, so I'm really just paying attention to the inequality sign. So if it says less than shade down, I'm going to use the word down. If you like to say underneath instead, do that. 
this is down. For this yellow line, this means shading down or shading underneath. If you, in general, have been doing like a scribble for shading, starting today, it is really important you do what I'm doing, and you'll see why in a second, okay? So nice, clean, vertical lines, straight lines down. For the blue line, this one, it, I see that it says Y is greater than. Greater than means shade above or shade up. So I'm going to make a little note here, shade up. So that means for this blue line, I'm shading up, above. The solution to this system of inequalities is where the shading overlaps. And if you use these nice straight lines, you'll see clearly that this section right here is where they overlap. So then you can take your eraser and very carefully erase what's not part of the solution. The solution is only where the lines, the shading overlaps. So let's make a note about that. Solution to a system of inequalities is where region where the shading overlaps. Because if we think about it, the shading for one line represents the solution side for that line. The shading for the other line represents the shading for that second line. So where they overlap is where the solutions for each line overlap. So a solution to the system is the entire region where the shading overlaps. This is a lot different than when we were solving systems of equations, because for a system, you were just looking for the point of intersection. That single value was a solution. With inequalities, with systems of inequalities, we have an entire shaded region. Any ordered pair in this area would count as a solution. With this in mind, let's work on B. So my colors are going to stay the same. The first line is yellow. This is an increasing slope, so I know it's this one. Second line is blue. It's my negative slope. It's got the decreasing line. Now the inequality signs have changed here, so let's see, are we going to shade above or below, up or down? This says Y is greater than, so that's shade up. This says Y is less than, shade down. We're going to do one at a time. So for the yellow line, this increasing line, we shade up or above. For the blue line, less than, we shade down. So just to say it one more time, this would be up, this is down. This is above, this is below. Down or below, they mean the same thing, whichever helps you see it. Ask yourself, where does the shading overlap? I'm hoping everyone is saying right here, because this is where I clearly see my lines overlap. See how it kind of makes like a cross thatched pattern that helps me see that this is my solution. So then I take my eraser and I very carefully erase what's not the solution. Very different from what the solution was for, for A. So we're starting to see the power or the impact of the inequality signs on what actually ends up being the common shaded region. Looking at C and D, 
again, the inequalities haven't, or excuse me, the MX plus B parts have not changed. It's just the inequalities that have changed. So let's actually just finish color coding all at once, okay? So this is the increasing line. This is the increasing line. This is my decreasing line, decreasing line. We're ready to take a closer look at the inequality signs. Go ahead and circle this for each and tell me, for each of these, are you shading up or down, shading up or down? Pause, write it, and then we'll compare. So it says Y is greater than, so I know that's shade up or above, whichever way you want to write it. This is also Y is greater than, so this is also shade up. So for both lines, I'm shading above or up. This is the upward direction on the y-axis. So that's like so for this one. And then to the blue line, up, shade up. Again, to find the solution, I look where does the shading overlap. It overlaps in this upper part. So I take my eraser, erase everywhere that's not the solution, so it really stands out what the answer is. See if you can do D all by yourself. What are you going to write here, and then how are you going to shade? And then we'll compare our answers. For the first one, I see Y is less than, so that means shade down. On the second one, it's Y is less than again, so that also means shade down down or below, whichever works. The downward direction is here. It, if I was thinking of it as above or below, this would also be below each of the lines. So for the yellow line, shading down. And for the blue line, shading down. So the solution here, where it overlaps, is this part, so I take out everything else. Any ordered pair in this shaded region is a solution. Any ordered pair in this part is a solution for this one. Solution. I want you to understand that any ordered pair you pick in these sections would be okay. It's not just one point anymore, it's an entire region. And if I zoom out so you can see the whole page, notice how different not a single one matches. So even though you have the same MX plus B part for each line, because the signs are different, the inequality signs are different, it totally changes what the solution is. So really highlighting the importance of paying attention to our inequality signs. Now that we've warmed up with how to shade, let's actually work on creating our own graphs. Let's get right into it with number one. I look at the system I have, I notice that both are solved for y. Notice how y is by itself, y is by itself. That's really nice because we can get right into using mx plus b to know how to graph. So I'm just going to circle this one and draw an arrow over here. M is negative two-thirds and B is three. I'm going to use the intercept first. So I come up and I plot my intercept at three. My slope tells me how to count. Negative two means down two. Positive three is right. So from here I go down one, two, right, one, two, three. Down two, right, one, two, three. Down two, right, one, two, three. Or I could go up one, two, to the left up two, one, two, three to the right, and I can keep doing this. The more points we have, the more straight our line will come out, especially since everybody is using a straight edge. Please pause here if you don't have your ID out. Go get your ID or take a piece of paper, fold it into fours, you'll have a straight edge.
I know that this is a solid line because this has an or equal to part. Now, just looking at the inequality sign, how am I going to shade here? Well, let me preface this. You could shade now or you could wait. So let's wait. I'm just going to call this line one. So we remember. This is line one. Let's talk about line two. For line two, m equals three divided by one, b equals negative four. So I'm going to plot that first down to negative four, and then I'm going to count up. One, two, three, write one. One, two, three, write one. One, two, three, write one. Two or more points is fine. If you get a couple more than that, like four points, it makes a nicer line. Looking at the inequality sign, I know that this is going to be a solid line. Errors on both ends. And I'm going to label that line two. So for line one, now let's look at the inequality sign. It says less than. That means shade below or shade down. I'm going to switch up the words just in case someone likes one versus the other. You could either write shade down or shade below. Below, right? So if this is my line, this is above, this is below. So shade below or shade down. For line two, my inequality sign says y is greater than or equal to. Greater than or equal to means shade above or shade up. So here's my line two. Above is this part of the y-axis going up. So I shade this side. Where my lines intersect or where they cross is my solution. So I take my eraser and I'll erase this because they don't. there's no intersecting of lines here. My, my shading, my purple and green lines. That was just purple. This is just green. I understand you may not be using colors, which is why it's really important you draw straight so that you can see where these crisscross. They create this cross thatch design here. That is my solution. Any ordered pair, any ordered pair in this shaded region works. We're done with number one. For number two, I'm going to circle this one. What's M and what's B? You write down M and B first. M is negative one half. B is six. And I'm going to call this line one. So the first piece of information I use is my Y intercept. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then my slope, negative one divided by two means down one, right two. So from my y-intercept, I'm going to count down one, right one, two, down one, right two. And it's not hard to get a lot of points on here, so I'm just going to keep going in both directions. The more points you have, the neater the graph. We ask ourselves, this says strictly less than, so dotted or solid? I hope everybody is saying dotted right now. Make it neat. I still need arrows on both ends. My second line, I will label line two. M, B. Go ahead and say what is M and B, and graph your line. M here is two, B is one. Give you a second to graph. So I'm going to plot my y-intercept at 1 because b is 1. Remember that 2 as a fraction is 2 divided by 1, which means up to right 1. 
So from my y-intercept, I will count up one, two, right one, up two, right one, up two, right one, up two, right one. Or from the y-intercept, I can count down to left, down to left one, down to left one. I check my inequality sign. This also is strictly less than. I don't, do not see an or equal to, so this will be a dashed line. And then I realized I forgot to label. This was line one. Make sure you label the lines. This is line two. On your own, please tell me, are you, what are you going to write here? Are you saying shade up or shade down based on the inequality signs? And then we'll compare our answers. Because this says less than, I know I'm going to shade down. This also says less than, for so, so for line two, I will also shade down. So then I go and I look for line one, I look at what I labeled line one. Down is this direction on the y-axis, so I shade this half for line one. For line two, here's line two. This is this is what down means. This half of the coordinate plane. So when I look at how this cuts the graph in half, down for line two means this side. So I'll go this way. Ask yourself, where's your solution? I can clearly see that my lines crisscross each other in this region. This is my solution. So I will erase everywhere that's not that part. And we're done. We have successfully graphed the system. Number three brings back one of our special cases. Notice it's just y and a number. Not only that, ask yourself with the first equation, do you have mx plus b? We do not. So circle the first line. Draw an arrow. I would recommend that you still approach standard form inequalities by graphing by intercepts. If you're a strong solver and you want to solve for y and go that route, you're more than welcome to. Just be careful of negatives, dividing by negatives, and fraction slopes. My recommendation for others who are looking for a strategy is just to go ahead and do what we've been doing with finding intercepts. X-intercept, let y be 0. To do that, that will, will look like 4x plus 0 equals 2. Cross out the zero, because zero is zero. Four x equals two. We'll divide by four, divide by four. I get x equals 0 0.5. Go ahead and find the y-intercept on your own. So y-intercept, let x equal zero. Press pause. Work on finding the y-intercept. So this will be 4 times 0 plus y equals 2. Notice, when we're finding our intercepts, we do not have any inequality sign here because we're plugging in an exact point and getting out an exact point. So equals, equals, equals. This will also be all equal signs. 4 times 0 is 0. Immediately, I get out y equals 2. Let's graph that line. So here's, for my x-intercept, here's 0, here's 1. So the x-intercept is halfway between 0 and 1. That's where 0.5 is. y equals 2. There's my y-intercept. And I only have two points. When we're graphing by intercepts, we will only have two points. So if you are, have not yet trusted me that a straight edge is really important, here it is, because you don't have a lot of points to guide your sketch. 
but if you have a nice straight edge, you can immediately work towards having a nice straight dotted line through these, through these two points. And I know it's dotted because I don't see any or equal to under that inequality. Now, unlike numbers one and two, I'm just going to scroll it for a second. In one and two, I, I already had y, y was solved for. See? Y is by itself, Y is by itself, Y is by itself, Y is by itself. But now Y is not by itself. So to know which side to shade, we will come back to checking zero, zero. But again, it's like a two second check. It should not take us time. That will be four times zero plus zero less than two. Notice for the check, the inequality sign comes back, okay? Because we're gonna look to see if we have a true or false statement. This entire side becomes zero less than two, true or false. Zero is less than true, <clears throat> sorry, zero is less than two, so I write true, and I will shade the side that zero, zero is on. If I've been very careful with my graph, zero, zero is on this side, so I'm shading this side. I'd be careful of shading right away, which is why I don't know if you noticed, I paused for a second, because we still have another line to graph. So visually, I would like you to know that you're going to shade this side and that it's below because zero, 0 is on this side, which is below. So for right now, I'm just going to make a note, shade below. And this is line one. Our second line is a special case. Remember that when it's just y and a number, that will be a horizontal line through that point. So I go to negative 2 on my y-axis. I will be drawing a dotted line because I do not see any equal or equal to parts. I don't need you to check anything because here we're coming back to the fact that y is by itself so for line two it says y is greater than so that tells me shade how I hope you right now are saying above or up shade above for line two so we have both of our lines let's find our solution region our shaded region we said for line one shade below which is this half line two we said shade above or shade up I don't need to start over there we're going to keep where the two sets of lines crisscross because that's where the regions overlap let's go ahead and erase where that does not happen. And we are done with number three. Let's work on number four together. Take a look at number four. What do you notice? Well, the first thing I notice is that neither of these are solved for Y. So one at a time, I'm going to take these and graph by intercepts. I'm going to make this one line one. So go ahead and pause. In terms of how you organize your work, x int let y equal 0. Get your titles. I plan on spacing at work because I see this one, right? This is my line two. I'm going to have to do intercepts for that as well. So I, visually, I'm going to cut this in half. Like imagine there's a dotted line right here. This will be work for line one. And then I'm going to have work for line two down here. So being neat is key. Space it out nice. So this will be line two. So right now, I would like you to find your x and y intercepts for this first line. I'm going to pause the video and do the work. 
So when you press play again, the solutions will be here and we will compare our answers for line one. Okay, I'm back. So I'm wondering how many people worked on this one and were like, oh no, you can't divide, I did something wrong. No, you did not do anything wrong. So as of this year, we're gonna find that math does not work out so pretty. In ninth grade, a lot of questions are built to come out with whole number answers, which is not a bad thing, but it's really not realistic. I mean, if you think about how many decimals exist just between zero and one, you have 0.1, you have 0.12, I don't know, seven, 0.186, 72, 0 0.3235, 0 0.7. There's literally an infinite number of decimals just between zero and one. Decimals are part of math, part of the real world. So we're gonna start having a lot more decimal work in our math work. Now, it could be that you wanna go back and double check, you didn't do something wrong, but I want us to make sure we're not automatically assuming something is wrong if we get a decimal. So if you needed help to know that you're right, go ahead and pause if you didn't finish to wrap these two up. Let's graph that. So negative 0.67 is gonna be between zero and negative one right there. And my y-intercept of negative one is right there. Again, notice how close these are. I don't have any other points and if I'm using a straight edge, I don't need any, I don't need any other points. So very carefully, Draw your line. I know that this is going to be a solid line because there's an or equal to right there. To know which side to shade, let's check zero, zero together. So this will be three times zero plus two times zero greater than or equal to negative two. That's zero greater than or equal to negative two. Is that true? Is zero greater than or equal to negative two? Yes, it is, true. So I will be shading the side of the line that zero, zero is on, which is this side, which is above, up. So I'm gonna write shade up. I'm not gonna shade yet because I still have another line to take care of. but I'm gonna make a record of that, so we'll come back to that. And I'll make sure I label this line one. So now we're gonna work on line two. Line two is also in standard form. So press pause, find your X and Y intercept, and do the check. When you press play again, the work here will be done, as well as the check. So press pause, and get it done. Here's my work. I got x equals 2 for the x-intercept, y equals 1 for the y-intercept, and then when I checked 0, 0, I got true. So let's see what this will mean. On my graph, I'm going to plot x equals 2, y equals 1. Very carefully use my straight edge. Based on the inequality sign, I know it will be a solid line. And when I checked zero, zero, that came out true. So mentally try to ignore this line one. Here's zero, zero, which means I'm shading, here's zero, zero. So for this line, I'm shading down because I'm shading the side zero, zero is on. So I'm gonna write shade down or below. And this is line two. So let's go back to line one. Here's line one, right here. For line one, we're shading up. Okay, that's line one. Line two, let's look at our notes. Line two, shade down. So here's line two, shade down. Where the shading sections overlap is my solution, which is right here. So then I take my eraser and I very carefully erase everywhere that's not part of that crisscross space. If 
That's my solution. Number five, I'm going to challenge you to do by yourself start to finish. My little reminder here will be that X equals a number. That is a vertical line. X equals a number is vertical. So start to finish, I want you to label this. Line one, and do the work here. And then this is line two. I'll get a set up towards the bottom here, x-intercept. Let y equal zero, y-intercept. Let x equal zero. And from here, your job is to get both lines graphed. For this one, you will check zero, zero. To know how to shade. Tell me, are you shading up or shading down? Graph and shade. So the next time you press play, this entire solution will be on the screen and we will compare our answers. It's very possible that you just pressed play because you weren't sure how to deal with x is less than or equal to negative 3 because we haven't looked at vertical lines in a while. So let me just remind you, when it's x and a number, I go to the x-axis and I plot that point. It's a vertical line. It's solid because of the or equal to. Now, when you're dealing with x, think about the x-axis, right? The x-axis, you do have left and right. So eventually, you will shade left. Okay? I'm not going to do it right now because you still have to graph the other line. But for those of you who were not confident on that first equation, I just helped you. You know how to graph that one and where you will eventually shade. Now, for real, pause, please, and finish the second line all by yourself. Get it graphed. Find your solution. All right, folks, welcome back. So I have successfully found my x and y intercepts. I got x equals negative 1.8 and y equals negative 3. And when I checked 0, 0, I found that it's a false statement. So once I plotted my two points and I drew my line, the side that 0, 0, the side that 0, 0 is on is false. If this side is false, it means this side is true, which means you're going to shade down. So I write shade down. You're shading the side that 0, 0 is not on. So for the vertical line, we said shade left. For line two, we're shading down the side that zero is not on. And now we'll carefully take our eraser, erase anywhere where the lines do not over overlap. So I'm going to erase this right here and this right here. So this angular section right here is my solution. Number five is all done. Number six, I'm going to leave to you to work on first thing tomorrow in class. So number six, you can choose to work on it now if you want to, but you can skip number six, save that for the class practice tomorrow. Um, there is a workshop planned for tomorrow. So number six will be our warm up for the workshop in class. And then number seven, how to check a point. You know how to check points. The difference is we haven't done it with an inequality yet. So for example, number seven says, determine whether each given point is a solution to the system of inequalities. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in x is 3 and y is 7 for both. So I'll write 4x plus y is less than 21. And 1 half x is less than or equal to 36 minus 5y. We'll do this one at a time. Because we're doing a check, we keep the inequality signs as they are. This will be 4 times 3 plus 7 less than 21, which is 12 plus 7 less than 21. 12 plus 7 is 19 less than 21. Is this true or false? Is 19 less than 21? Yes, it is. We put true. Now, just like when we checked points in systems of linear inequalities, 
It has to be true in both. So we, it's true in one. Let's see what happens when we plug it in here. So that's one half times three, less than or equal to 36 minus five times seven. So half of three is 1.5, less than or equal to 36 minus 35. That's 1.5 less than or equal to one. Is that true? Is that true? One and a half is not less than one. So it's false. Because it's false here, the answer is no. It has to be true for both. I'm going to leave this one also for you for the start of class tomorrow. So number six and number seven will be the warm-ups before the workshop tomorrow in class. Great job, guys. I hope that this feels pretty good to us since a lot of it overlaps with graphing systems, but now we're just dealing with inequalities instead. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.